In this video we will see how we can create this kind of a toy car. We will uh, use drag and drop method and we also use blend and chamfer commands and we'll also make it hollow so we will use um, the shell command here up in the ribbon bar. And if we come over to the theme browser and I will expand the part we will see what I have used to create this part. I have used some features like block, chamfer, blend and shell part and uh, also a couple of uh, cut cylinders. So I will close this scene and I will start a new scene and we will begin with dragging an extrude shape drop it here and use the I key to change the camera angle to top front right then the D key to fit the scene in the camera. And then we go to the IntelliShape level so that we see the handles and we will change the size of this uh, box. But first we see that uh, when we enter the IntelliShape level this handle is already selected and we can change the size of, uh, of this box in this direction. So for instance if I type 60 here and hit enter we see that this handle is now selected and I can type 40 and hit enter and now the height handle is selected and I can type 30 and hit enter. When I hit enter the length handle is now selected. So every time you hit enter you will also change the selection of a handle. And there is a setting for this option in the option window. So if we go to here to the top of the screen and select or click the option button we open the option window and if we go to interaction we have a setting here automatically switch to next size box handle value after enter so if I uncheck this box then I will click OK if I now go back to the IntelliShape level, we see that this handle is now selected. If I hit or type 50 and hit enter, this handle is still selected and it will not change handles. If I select this one and type 50 and hit enter, it is still selected. And I will uh, leave the setting this way, so it will not select another handle when I hit enter. I will also change uh, the size of this box symmetrically. So if I right drag this handle, I can change the size symmetrically in this uh, direction. But we also see that we have some handles on this side and on this side. These handles are symmetrical handles. If I select this handle, we can see this symmetrical handle here. And if I select this symmetrical handle, I will activate the other handle on the other side and now if I left drag this handle I will change the size symmetrically. So there are two ways to change size symmetrically. First by using these symmetrical handles or right drag a handle you will change symmetrically. And there is a setting for that too in the option window. So if we come up here to the top of the screen and click the option button and we open the window and we go to interaction we can disable symmetrical handle toggle so if I check this box and click OK now the symmetrical handle handles are, uh, are hidden so now the, we have only one way to change the size symmetrically that's right dragging a handle like so. And I will have it this way. So in this case now we will change the size of this box. I will right drag this length handle, right drag a bit and then I will let go the right mouse button and here I will type 120 and hit enter. And we see now that these handles are still selected. It will not change handles. Then I will change the size symmetrically in this direction as well. So I will right drag this handle and I will drag a bit, a little bit, and then I will let go the right mouse button 
and here I will type 60 and hit enter. And then I will select this height handle and type 80 and hit enter. Then I use the D key for fit the scene in the camera, like so. Then I will deselect by clicking outside the block. And I will continue by dragging a cut extrude and I will drop it on the midpoint of this edge. Drop the cut extrude on the midpoint of this edge. Then I will right drag this width handle. So I will change the size of this cut extrude symmetrically. Then I use the shift key to snap to this side so I will remove material in both sides. Then I will grab this length handle, use the shift key to snap to this side, and then I will select this length handle and I will type 60 and select the lower height handle and type 40 and hit enter, like so. Then I will move the camera to this side and I will chamfer this edge. So I will come up here to select chamfer edges. And if we come over to the properties, we see that we have several chamfer types. In this case, we will use distance, distance. So I will select this option. Then I will select this edge. And we have two handles to uh, make some adjustments. When we have chosen distance, distance, we can change the distance on both sides independently. So I will change it to this position and I will change that one to this position, like so. And if we come over to the properties, we see that we can change now the dis distance independently. So the upper, this one, I will change to 20 and the lower I will change to 50, like so. If we go to the advanced options, we see that we can also toggle the value. If I check this box, we see that we can toggle the value so that the distance of 20 will be on the lower side and the, the distance of 50 will be on, on the upper side. But it will not change the values here in these, in these boxes. It will only change in the scene. But we will have it uh, this way. 20 millimeters in this direction and 50 millimeters in this direction. Then I will right click here in the scene and click OK. Then we will round some edges and we will use blend to do that. So we come up here to change or to select blend edges. And here in radius box, we will select or type four millimeters and hit enter once. And I will select this edge and this one and also this one, and this one. But here I want to change to another radius. So I'll come over to the properties. I will expand this window so that we see the selected edge. Here I will type 15 and hit enter. So I will change the selected edge. Then I will select this edge, but I don't want this one to be 15 millimeters, so I go back to the properties and I will change that to 4 millimeters and hit enter. And I click OK up here to confirm all the changes. Then I will also round these edges, so I will come up here to select blend edges again. And we have radius of 4 millimeters, so I will click this edge. And I will also select the edges on the other side, like so. Then I will right click and click OK. Next step is to make this uh, part hollow. So I move the camera to the bottom so that I can see the bottom and come up here to select shell part command. And if we come over to the properties, we see that we have three different shelling types inside, outside and both sides. Now the, we see the open faces are red. It means that we ha have to select which side will be open. And we will select the bottom, like so. And the thickness, well, we change the thickness to four millimeters. And if we click this button to preview the selection, we will see how it will look like uh, when we click OK. 
we have also individual face thickness. So if I click in this box so that the text becomes red, I can change a one side or several sides to have another thickness. So if I change this uh, value to 10 millimeters, and if I select this side, you will see that this side will now have a thickness of 10 millimeters. But in this case, we will not have an individual face thickness. So I will right click in this uh, box and clear the selection. Then I will click OK. And we have made this uh, part hollow. Next step is to uh, create holes for the wheels. So I will come over here to the starter catalog to select the cut cylinder. Drag the cut cylinder and drop it here on the edge and change the diameter to 30. Hit enter. Then I move the camera to this side and I will grab this height handle and use the shift key to snap to this side so it, the hole will go right through. Then I move back and I will drag another cut cylinder. Drop it here on the edge like so and then I will change the diameter to 30 millimeters and move the camera to this side, grab this height handle and use the shift key to snap to this side. Like so. Now we will change the position of uh, the holes. So we will select the uh, cut cylinder here. So we have to come close and we will click on this surface until we have selected the cut cylinder. And now we will change the position by using the tri-ball. And we can easily activate the tri-ball by clicking this icon. Or you can also click the icon up here in the ribbon bar. But I will use this icon. I will click here and to activate the tri-ball. Now I can move this hole a little bit, like so. So this is a, a easy way to change the position of things like a hole in, in IronCAD by using the tri-ball. So to deactivate the tri-ball, you can use the Q key on the keyboard or you can also use the escape key or click this uh, icon up here in the ribbon bar to deactivate the tribal. And we will make some changes on this one as well. So I will click on this surface and select the cut cylinder, activate the tribal, and I will move the hole a little bit backward like so. Then I will click this um, icon to deactivate the tribal. I used I key to change the camera angle and the D key to fit the scene in the camera. So now we have made this toy car and we also have uh, briefly used the tribal. But we will use the tribal a lot during this training course and you will learn how to use it in the right way. Uh, this part was just a briefly test to see how it uh, how the tribal works. So now we have finished the toy car. I will close the scene and I will not save it. So I will click no here. 